Good morning. We are blessed this morning with our children who are coming. Give us a comment.
Now let me know how Sunday is begin a whole week. But we know that this boy is celebrating. They so often we come on all Sunday and we celebrate. And every time on Easter we celebrate, but we don't know what's happening in the in between. And there's hope for me to fill that in this week for me. So that as we will come together to worship for Easter, we will indeed be worshiping for our Lord. Our second scripture for today comes from Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Now, when as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethsaida in the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent the disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead, and you will find that girl here with her. And her cloak on her will make you Jesus. I'm tired of them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. And he will send it by me. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. It seems that things just happened at the turn of the prophet and he sent this one to heaven. Prophet said, Say to the daughter of Zion, your see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt, and they placed the cloaks on them that so Jesus could sit on. A very large crowd was spread to spread some of the on the road, while others got branches from the tree. And spread them on the road. The cows that went ahead of him and don't follow them. Holy the Son of God, Son of David, he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowd answered, This is Jesus. The prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, this is the word of God for the people. Thanks be to God. Let's give up. <laughs> Could you bless a grace? Would you please join me in prayer for worship? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing to you. O oh Lord, for all our coming to you. Amen. Today's sermon is titled, Hail Him, Nail Him. Let us take a look at Jesus' life from birth to Palm Sunday, and then reflect on this holy week. He was born in a stable in Bethlehem in Judea. In the days of Herod the king, he went away to get away from Herod. His parents fled to Egypt for his only child. When he was 12 years old, he and his parents traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the annual feast of Passover. When the feast ended, Mary and Joseph became separated from Jesus. They searched for him, for Jesus had gone to the Lord's temple and conversed with the people there. The people were amazed by his depth of understanding and by his knowledge. When Mary found Jesus at the temple, Jesus said to her, Why are you searching for me? Don't you know I have to be in my father's house? The next time you read about Jesus, when he was about 30 years old, he left the district of Galilee and traveled to the wilderness of the Jordan River to be baptized. His cousin, John the Baptist, was preaching the gospel and baptizing people. John baptized Jesus, and at that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God ascending like a dove and lighting on him. And the voice of the heaven said, This is my son, who I am. With him I am well pleased. Jesus started his early ministry. He preached the gospel with authority and humility. He told stories and parables, and he even prophesied his own death. During his three years of earthly ministry, Jesus walked a distance of 3,100 miles from town to town, preaching and spreading the ministry. Today we see that Jesus Christ, the King, is coming to Jerusalem. The question is, what is he 
coming for and why. We learned that this is the first time in Jesus' life he decided not to walk but to ride the dumb. As we look towards this being called Holy Week, Compassion Week, we see that Jesus' ministry, Jesus public ministry concludes with the suffering, death, and resurrection. Let us go walking with Jesus in the Holy Week and read that each day of the week he did prayerfully walk with Jesus and his most difficult days and yes, glorious week. Yes, today is Palm Sunday. The Sunday is bittersweet for us because even as we read it of the celebration, we know that Friday is coming. The cross is coming. We know that many in the same crowd will, within a few short days, exchange words of praise to words of death. Shouting Hosanna, Hosanna, our Lord comes. And then later shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Yet Jesus does not come as we expect him, not as we would like him to come. Today marks the beginning of the Holy Week. We make final preparation to cover away the beginning of the Holy Week. Our work during Lent season has been to clear the spiritual path so Christ's presence in and within us may become more recognizable. As we heard the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we must reflect on what it means to welcome Jesus into the Holy Week. We imagine for a moment that a crowd gathered here were dancing and shouting in the streets. Some were laying down palm branches on the streets shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Here comes Jesus riding on the back of a coat, which he had his two disciples to borrow for the man in town. Let us look at what Jesus' entry means. He has come, he has come as Jerusalem King to bring salvation. But salvation means more than relief and the oppressor regime. Jesus entered Jerusalem to free the people from itself. He comes to make many wrong things right. He comes to bring salvation from oppression and anything, anything else that corrupts God's creation. He saves us from the short-sightedness and of our own perceived needs. His entry, his entry also signifies the divine judgment. We, we pretend that it is the old, the religious leaders are being judged. But Jesus' judgment falls on all of us. In fact, Jesus coming to town is not good news for us. It's foreign to our own plan for salvation. What we often resist seeing about the kingdom is that every step of the way, Jesus must wrestle with his own people and their agendas. Resistance to the way of peace, self-sacrifice, and service is so strong that his own disciples will eventually desert him, and his own people will condemn him to the cross. Yet Jesus is at the beginning of the end of his earthly ministry on the road to Jerusalem. He is traveling towards his death, burial, and glorious resurrection. And while the road leads Jesus to Jerusalem, the Jerusalem road leads us to heaven. We must be willing to travel the road that Jesus traveled. As Jesus rode into town, there were many people in the crowd who was thinking, here's the one who will free us from the road. Here's the one who will run these filthy Romans right out of town and settle the kingdom of David with all his glory. But the king of kings chose the road of humility, which means the quality of being humble. He does not come riding to town on a white stallion, but in the back of a donkey, which he borrowed. This reflects the life of Jesus Christ, which has the life of humility. He does not come into this world with wealth, but he came in poverty. After all, he was born in a stable, he was the son of a carpenter. He did not come in majesty, but meekness. He was not one who had a lot of material fortune and fame, but in but with humility. Jesus speaks when Jesus speaks of his kingdom, he speaks in terms of being one of service 
and servanthood, a word of humility and forgiveness. What is interesting is that the last night that Jesus spent with his disciples, only hours before he was to die, his disciples were arguing over who would be the greatest in the kingdom. After all, what have they been taught by Jesus? They still didn't get it. They simply did not understand that the road Jesus was, had traveled was a road of humility and is a road that he requires his disciples to travel on. I think sometimes we lose sight of that ourselves. We love the desire and the blessings of our lives, but we really want to follow Jesus on the road of humility. To follow Jesus means going down the that road, the road of the cross. We have given up our selfish desires. It means denying, denying ourselves. It means putting not only God first in our lives, but putting others first as well. Our family, our friends, our enemies. The role of humility is the role that says, I will live like Jesus lived. I will strive to be confronted in his image. The Jerusalem road is the road to humility, the road that we, will, we are called to follow. Jesus on. Gospel, we come to try and entry, entry that Sunday morning so long ago, but made present to us to this day. As you receive the palm branches, we hope that you consider that you are part of that vast crowd. Let the palm branches remind us to praise Him with our prayerful presence during the last three days of His life. Pray with Jesus as he considers the difficult days ahead of him. Monday of Holy Week. Following Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem, he spent Sunday night in Bethany, the village at the foot of Mount Olive. As Jesus returned on Monday to Jerusalem, he noticed the fig tree that had produced leaves ahead of season. But since the fig tree bore bare leaves, he expected to find figs. Yet it was fruitless. He cursed the fig tree and it withered the next day. Another event of Holy Monday is the Temple Cleansing. As Jesus visited the Holy Temple, he saw that many people were selling animals and exchanging money in the Temple's court. This made him angry because the Temple was intended to be a place to worship God, not a place of commerce. He made a way out of some strata food and chased the merchants out of the Holy Temple. Jesus said to them, Take these things away. <laughs> Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Pray with Jesus as he is passionate to purify us. Choose the authority. According to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus again returned to Jerusalem when he is confronted by the temple's leadership for what he did the day before. The question is authority. He also teaches extensively using parables from other forms. There is the parable of the vineyard, the vineyard, and the parable of the wedding banquet. He also there is also the teaching of paying taxes and the rebuke of the Sadducees who deny the resurrection. Continue to pray with Jesus and listen carefully to his final teachings just before passion. Wednesday of Holy Week. Traditionally, this day is called Spy Wednesday because it was on this Wednesday before the crucifixion that Judas conspired to hand Jesus over. For this, he was paid 50 pieces of silver. Jesus likely spent the day in Bethany. In the evening, Mary of Bethany anointed Jesus with costly perfume oil. Judas, Judas objected. But Jesus rebuked him and says, Mary has anointed him for his burial. Are you praying? Holy Monday, Thursday. Jesus did three things on this day. First, he predicts you what will happen the next day, which is the Friday. Second, Jesus gives his followers symbols of the remnant of his body and his blood sacrificed on behalf of mankind. During the Passover celebration, Jesus gathered his disciples. He knew that this would be his final meal and that would share with 
but you will share with the disciples before his crucifixion. It was at this time that Jesus instituted what we now know in many Christian churches as communion. It is called the Last Supper or the, or the Lord's Supper. He suffered and died for us. He gave up his blood, uh, his body and blood for forgiveness. Third, Jesus provided a very important principle for living a Christian life. The greatest of those who serve others, not those who seek to be saved. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray as he waited for his hour to come, it was here that Jesus, having been betrayed by Judas, was arrested and taken, taken, to, taken, to, the, taken to the chief priest, Pontius Pilate. And here, there comes to a trial. All through the night, Jesus had been locked in the dungeon of the high priest's house. Early this morning, he was brought before Pontius Pilate and transferred his case to him. Herod went, Herod sent him back to Pilate, who, sometime in the mid morning, bound by the pressure of the temple leadership and the crowd, Pilate called the crowd. Sorry, Pilate asked the crowd if they would like him to release the king of the Jews. And the crowd responded by saying, Release Barabbas. He then asked a second time, and the crowd shouted, Crucify him. And he asked, What crime has he committed? And the crowd roared even louder, saying, Crucify him. At that point, Pontius Pilate released Barabbas. Then went and Jesus to his house again by the crucifixion. In the late morning, Jesus was taken to the taken by the soldiers to the city up to the hillside of Calvary, which means place of the skulls. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until at three o'clock. At three o'clock, Jesus called out to the Lord, saying, Eli, Eli, let us have let us have a chain, which means, My God, my God. Why have you abandoned me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, This man is going to Elijah. At once, one of them got in his pot, filled it with sour wine, put it on the stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and took his last breath. At that moment, the curtains of the temple were torn in two. The earth shook and the rock still split. That evening, his body was taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb hastily before sundown. Today is a day of prayer, fasting, and absenteeism. Wherever possible, as Christians are urged to keep the day free of work, of social engagement, or entertainment, and to devote themselves to communion prayer and worship. Holy Saturday. The body of Christ is in the tomb, but his soul is among the dead. To announce the kingdom, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. For those who hear it will live. Meanwhile, the disciples, heartbroken at the death of Jesus, observed the Jewish Sabbath in sorrow. They had forgotten the promise of Jesus that, that he would rise. We cannot forget this promise. Tonight in our community, after summer, we will gather for the great Easter vigil where we experience Jesus rising from the dead. We gather in darkness and let the Easter fire, which reminds us that Jesus is light in the darkness. He's in the light of the world. My friends, let us allow Jesus to to bring down our resistance and bring us, bring us to the kingdom. There are a few ways to follow Jesus this week. One, offer forgiveness free from the heart. Let's all become good forgivers without keeping count. As Jesus instructed Peter, you, want, you must make room in your heart for Jesus. Two, pray. Pray the act of personally relating to God by sharing thoughts and feelings. You guys remember the abbreviation ASAP? 
as soon as possible, we use that today in our most everything. What about thinking about it in a different way? ASAP means always say a prayer. Just like forgiveness that comes from the heart, so is prayer. In looking back at Jesus' journey, you see him entering Jerusalem on a cloak and being celebrated by the crowd, shouting for Hosanna in the heights and waving by palm branches. Palm Sunday reminds us to praise him with our prayers as we journey along with Jesus. Holy Monday reminds us of the cleansing of the temple, of the merchants and the prisoners of faith. We are, we are asked to pray with Jesus and so we can make, he can make us you know, Holy Tuesday, he teaches us of the parable of the vineyard and the banquet. We are asked to pray and listen to the final teaching. On Holy Wednesday, this day when Judas conspires to betray Jesus for 30 silver coins. On Monday, Thursday, we see that Jesus predicts his death, the last supper, and he provides important principles that we will serve others. But Friday, we see the crowds are now seen. Crucify, uh, uh, sorry, but Friday, you see the crowd are now saying, must be saying, crucify him, crucify him, instead of Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus was whipped and mocked and crucified on the cross to free us from our sin. He has taught us to be humble, to offer forgiveness to others, and to pray to the Father. The question is, are we in that crowd of our Sunday? Not coming to Jesus and with his palm branches. Are we in the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him on the Friday? Amen. Thank you, Ed. All good questions, don't you say? Which one are we going to be? Are we going to deal with the crowd, crucify him, crucify him? Or are we going to remember that Christ died for our sins and rose for our redemption? We'll hear the rest of the story next week. Let us Let us stand now as we sing in the 2111, we sang our glad hosanna. Stand to the end.
We come back to that time in our service when we share our joys and our concerns. I have a joy that if Dana has offered her sister in law gave birth a week early. The baby was born on the 8th. Her name is Oakland Ember. Um, Oakland Ember. She was 7 pounds and 7 pounds and 8 ounces and 21 and a half inches long. That's a big baby. Especially since there's a very short um, labor. Apparently, uh, she pushes and she has a baby. So, uh, those are the kind of and the nurse delivered her. Anyway. <laughs> the other thing I want to lift up is that the pepperoni should be um, in the air at this point in time. Would it be not anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Did I do this morning? This morning. This morning. So, in that case, we need to keep them in our prayers as they are hopefully in the air for about the last 44 minutes. Deb is a little concerned, um, but you translate that as spirit. So um, let us keep the throwing in our prayers as well. They enjoyed their vacation in Spain. I would like to say some. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, I'd like to say Patty is uh, recovering well. Uh, wires were taking off, were taking off her jaw on Tuesday, and now it's just rubber banded, so she's not mumbling quite as bad. But the healing process is going good. I'd like to thank everyone who has sent cards or letters and prayers and whatever. Uh, second thing, uh, prayers for people suffering for mental illnesses, especially a young man named Danny. Uh, his prayers that people uh, get the help they need. Every illness is every family story, not every family event, in some way, shape, or form. And most definitely, we must keep Andy in our prayers as, as he deals with this, but all people who deal with mental illness. Yeah. Uh, prayers for safe travels for James. Uh, he's going to be traveling to Spain for a few days on Wednesday, and he'll be there with his school trip until the following Wednesday. So hopefully, they. Uh, get on a plane and get over to Barcelona and see that in Madrid and then uh, see flight home uh, all the way. If you couldn't hear what she said, her son James is on, on his way to Spain this Wednesday, this past trip. So, uh, talk to her later. Give her a lot of support because while he's gone, she's got to she, she can be sure. So keep James in her. Okay, um, yes, Liz. Um, prayers for my niece who over the last year has had a double mastectomy, gone through chemo and radiation, and handled that well, and now has a lung infection and trying to take it out. She's having a heart attack as well. Her name is Kelly. Thank you. Give it to you again. Yvonne, what is this one? I don't have one. <laughs> Just a reminder that this week, Thursday, is one Thursday, but the uh, Rebecca Circle will be meeting. We're going to use the Monday uh, service for our program, and then we will have a short meeting afterwards. So that's this week, Thursday, uh, April 14th. The Esther Circle then will meet the following week on the 21st at 1.30 here at the church. Yes. Um, Mr. Dalton, that will be sitting in rows to enjoy after the service. Um, we have cake this morning for nice refreshments. And also we have a lot of baskets that we put together for the week. Baskets over in the narthex as well. Yeah. Bill wants us to remember that um, the basket ladies have put together lots of baskets and they're out there for sale on, uh, outside of the 
of their <laughs> and no fear stopping them from spreading the word. Oh, I'm sorry, I said, but they came down on spirits when I was down before. Oh, my Lord, it's been up for so many times. Oh, my Lord, for one of the hands, or was it one of the homes I asked? I would also like prayer to be in the way to our body prayer day because um, our hand washing service is going to be hand washing the day too.
Sure enough, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Not over the right. Yes. I, I talked to Karen before the service, and I said, we're going to have a pumpkin home service tonight. And she said, I'm just to the effect that I could stop the other <laughs> Karen's never going to speak to me again, you know? Please, Karen, that would be Karen. I will you know, speak to the pumpkin in my soul. Where's that be? Thank you. 